Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> no. Time for bladder check. Check. So it's a show? It's a lifestyle. It's a religion. <laughs> My emotions! My emotions! I'm still French. Ouais, c'est pas faux. I'm a woman, Mary. I can be as contrary as I choose. Non, moi je crois qu'il faut que vous arrêtiez d'essayer de dire des trucs. Cold, you know that moment when you're feeling the cold in your bones. I don't know if it's like that for everyone on this planet or just me, but sometimes it's so cold that I have the impression to feel it into my bone. Like really, I'm cold inside. <laughs> no, I'm not a vampire or titan or whatever. Titan, they are hot inside. I'm Laura, I'm gonna watch Attack on Titan season 3, episode 4. 4? Yes, 4. I just watched the episode 3. If you want to see my reaction video about that, I'm gonna put the link into the eye. Yesterday I watched the two first episodes of the season 3, that's really great. I'm not gonna watch the OVAs. At first I plan to watch them between the episode 1 and 3. No, the two about World Sina before the season 3 and the one about Mikasa after the three first episodes but I checked again with some of you guys on the comments and on Twitter how I should do stuff and you really told me to just watch the season 3, the two parts of the season 3 and after that to watch the OVA about the lost girls, you know, these three things to really avoid spoilers no matter what, to not add anything, any spoiler. I'm listening to you guys and that's why right now I'm at the episode 4 and I didn't watch the OVAs. <laughs> you know between the last episode and this one I was really like should I come back to the end of the season 2 to see again the face of that guy and to compare it with the face of Erwin's dad and to compare it also with that face of that professor that Kenny I think mentioned earlier. For these two, you know, that was a professor that he mentioned and right there we have that flashback about Erwin's dad who is a teacher. It's the same person. But the blonde hair, the glasses like that, what he said to Erwin, for me it might be that guy outside. And the fact that we had the thing about they killed Erwin's dad because he was telling all of these things and it was against the government in fact to think like that and that's why they killed him, we had an accident about that and we are seeing Erwin in front of his grave. It's not enough for me to think that this guy Erwin's dad really died and that it's not the same guy than the one outside who was on the Beast Titan. And the fact that he's against the government, which is for me related to that organization, so the fact that Erwin's dad was against the organization, the government, and could have maybe escaped and created the Beast Titan, we know that the Beast Titan is against this organization. It's fitting well for me. But no, I'm not gonna come back. And I'm gonna check during the editing with the two first episodes of this season to really be sure that we're talking about the same teacher, but for that I'm pretty sure that it's the case. But no, I'm not gonna come back, I'm not gonna cheat, like, come on. I already the opportunity to binge watch all of this anime just like that, you know, to watch it without waiting a lot between episodes. I'm not gonna... And also to re-watch the episodes, in fact, during the editing, like, I'm watching four or five episodes and then I edit these four or five episodes so I'm watching them twice like that like it's already feeling that I'm cheating because I have the time to think about stuff about my series to rewatch the episodes to find new clues to reevaluate my series and all and to have this opportunity to have plenty of episodes at once so no I'm not gonna come back to that and we had also the one about Historia and her mom. Her mom. 
the person who gave birth to you but she was clearly not your mom at any point she was denying your existence the only words that she said to you were about the fact that she never considered you as her daughter and she wanted to kill you but she did not have the courage to do that for her it would have been something brave to do but you know if we are considering the life of that girl I mean of Historia's mother she was not in love with you know with her dad like she was used by him as a sl sex slave or something like that like she called him master she was taken away almost all of the night to to go visit him surely and the life that she had uh, we don't know a lot about it but what we can imagine about it is also really sad so i'm not gonna blame her about that you know but surely about how she was talking to historia like you can deny her existence and i understand why but to really talk to her like that that's so rough Whew. it's really logical with what we know about historia the fact that she never felt like she could be herself that she was hiding you know with that fake smile with that name of krista the fact that Amy also all of that thing about the two of them having the same background, the fact that they never could have been herself, like people denying their existence and the fact that they never lived for herself. It's really making more sense now for Historia's part of that parallel, you know, between these two. Can you be the queen, the next queen, Historia? That's what Erwin wants to put you on the throne so maybe it can repair stuff but for me it's too easy to think like that, to have that plan it can't work so easily, clearly they're never gonna accept that, you know, the government but also this society on itself, how it's working and the ones inside who are part of this organization they're never gonna accept that neither like, for me it can't work but the fact that your dad just told you that you are part of the royal family, that you can be the successor of the throne, does it mean that himself, he wants you to be the next queen? Something is wrong right there. With him confessing that to you, something is wrong. All guys that are chased, they are forced to hide, they are going after Historia and Irene, that's great. And your dad, Historia told you that you can save humanity. I mean, that's what Dr. Yeager said to Eray. And also, how can you save humanity by doing what? Mm, I need to think about it more. Maybe to have more information also, for sure. But even without new information, new reveals during this episode, I just need to hear that conversation between you and your dad again to try to understand more what he told you. You're there, you can save humanity. How can she? Because she's a clever titan also? <laughs> because of what? You want her to do what? Or you want to use her to do what? How can she save humanity by becoming the queen? She's gonna save humanity by doing something else. By revealing the truth about something, but she doesn't know anything, Historia. All of what she knows, she told it to our guys, so... Nothing that she knows can help. But I'm pretty sure that she can save humanity by seeing one information, revealing something more than by an action situation, you know, like Eren, he can do because he's a titan, because he can fight and all. I'm pretty sure that Historia, it's not by fighting, it's more by her existence or one information that she can bring, that she can save people, you know, that she can reveal it to people. Uh, what does she know that the other wants 
don't know. Nothing that she revealed, you know, yet can save humanity. I have to work on that. <laughs> Not now. I'm gonna go for this episode 4. Like usually, if you want to have my Patreon on which we have 5 episodes of Advent. It's a lot, 5 episodes of Advent, really. And with an extended all for action part for the season 2, I put a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of for action parts. And even extended for action parts can be interesting because I'm not cutting a lot, you know, into the scenes like I'm forced to do for YouTube. It's the best way to support me. You can support me also right down on YouTube by liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting. It's great, you know, to know that you are right there, guys, to do that. Is it really helping for now? No, let's be honest with that. But I hope that one day it's gonna help. And that's why I created that Patreon also to give you these advantages in exchange of your support, you know, real support for me, for this channel to continue it. So if you are interested and if you can, join us on Patreon. Let's go for this episode 4. Uh, a death, a reveal, a death, a reveal. A reveal! <laughs> each time I'm really putting my bet, you know, for each new episode of Attack on Titan, I'm like, one death, one reveal. Normally we're not gonna have a fight, so one reveal. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> You were the ones walking with Ami. That girl, I recognized her annoying voice. They are, and the fact that n now no one is doing it. What do you think about that? You don't know that it was Ami? Oh! You're arresting the survey cops? Who is gonna defend you against the titans? Like, you don't care anymore about that. Sorry. This story! Trust? Okay. Really? You're saying that to a journalist? Uh -huh. I didn't know see that there were new things. Go after them, go after the survey cops and not the titans anymore. The sun! You're going after me? For how long? People are not gonna believe him that easily. I'm feeling sad for you. You would fight? No. You want to motivate him to talk him like that to him? Nah. Ah, good call. Talk with them, they knew Annie and they don't know the truth about Annie. Marlo, he was the one trying to do things right, you know, believing that he can do things right. No. Oh, the brainwashing is up. None of you. Sent 
の何も知らねえのに俺らもそんな同じだよルトはお前のせいこの世界の不正を正すことができるのなら俺は名乗ってやります He's saying the truth that's really what he wants We saw it But with what is happening right now You can't take that risk
ちっていた Is it this red? Oh, real concern. Yes. No. Too much honor, you know, to say something like that. Maybe it's gonna say something like a threat, threatening them with the truth or something like that. He said it's gonna be up to you and them what is gonna happen. And he said that he trusts Pixies to do something. Like maybe you're gonna threaten them by saying that if they are killing you, if they are doing something, Pixies is gonna do something else. You said to Pixies, at some point I'm gonna be arrested and they're gonna try to kill me. And if they're killing me, you know what you have to do, you have to do that and that. And maybe Erwin is gonna say that, you know, to the king and to these guys, like, if you're killing me, that is gonna happen and it's really wrong. And that's why he said it's gonna be up to you and them to decide what can be that thing, that threat. For me, it's the truth, revealing the truth about Historia. Because right now, you're saying that Historia, she's not a threat to you because no one knows really what is happening right there. It's only birds into cages, like you're not considering Historia and the fact that she can claim the throne as a threat because not a lot of people know the truth. You know the title of this episode, it was trust. Half of this episode was about trust, but half of it was also about the truth. Half of it was about trust because ah, we trust, you know, Marlo and Itcha. And now they're gonna be part of our guys, our team, that's so great. The girl on herself, you know what I think about her, she was pretty annoying when we discovered her with Annie. Her voice and how she was acting like... Oh, the girl uh, annoyed me a lot. But I appreciated also what she did after that, you know, when she said to these two soldiers you want to stop doing that because people are watching at us, like you don't want to act like that. It was really clever to do it like that, to stop this moment like that. So I appreciated that. But for the rest of her character, she she was a pain in the ass. So I don't care about her, but I'm glad that Marlo can join us because I appreciated his character, the fact that he wanted to do what is right and that's why he wanted to join the military police. And that conversation that he had with Annie, Annie was telling him, like, you want to do what is right, but you can't stop them, these soldiers. Like, if you really want to stop them, I can be on your side. All of these discussions and stuff that he said made me think that he was really a good person and that he wanted really to fight for the good things. So to have him joining us, the Levi squad, it's really great. The fact that he's named Marlo and that Right there, you know, he was tasted by Jan, you know, Marlo, Marco, Jan. <laughs> you know the power that the name Marco can have on me if it's related to Jan. I'm picturing the relationship between Marco and Jan as a bromance between these two. 
Or maybe not, but just, you know, the fact that Marco died like that, it has such an impact on Jan that for me, it's really like the thing which can make me cry just like that if Jan is talking about Marco. So to have right there Marlo being hired, you know, by Jan, oh, I felt that it could be an issue. <laughs> but I'm glad they joined us. And we had also that son, that reverse son, who trust Angie and the other guy, you know, to intervene during that moment with that plan to reveal the truth about to reveal the truth about the death of his dad. He trusts them, but also they trust him, and now people are gonna trust him to do that, to be the boss, you know, to do what he said during that speech. Like, okay, it's a question of trust, but right there it was also a question of truth being revealed because why Marlo and Ichi, they want to join the survey cops and all, it's because you are revealing them the truth about the fact that Annie was a female titan and that people lied to them and same for these people who are choosing, you know, to follow in a way the new bus, it's because you are revealing the truth to them and you are revealing also that during all of this time, the military police lied to them. So for me, it's a question of trust, but also a question of truth. These two moments, but also this episode on itself. Like at the end, what Erwin is deciding to do, it's a question of truth, in my opinion. He's gonna reveal something, or he's gonna play with the truth about Historia, and it's a question of trust, because he trusts Pixies for what he told him to do. Erwin is not gonna die. I mean, I know that maybe one day he's gonna die. Not because he's gonna be old, old, but because, you know, he's gonna be killed. I know that it can happen, but not like that. You know, not being executed by these guys, like, for a character like Erwin, with such an amazing commander and like I can't count how many times I said that I would trust him with my life so for me he can't die like that if he's gonna die it's gonna be during a battle or something like that and he can't die also before having a new and final conversation with Levi, like their relationship is so important for these two characters, but also like that's such a good relationship since it was revealed, you know, how it began into the No Regrets OVA that I watched, you know that guys. Since then, I appreciate so much their relationship that I want to, to have a final discussion between these two, between Erwin dying. I'm not talking about Levi dying? No. At any point, Levi is gonna die. Never. Uh, mark my words. With that, Levi is never gonna die. If one day it would happen, <sighs> no. <laughs> I don't want to imagine that. You know that I have six favorite characters into this anime. Still the same for now and still into the same order. Even if I'm beginning to really appreciate Eren and maybe soon he's gonna become one of my favorite. But for now it's not into the, the top list. For now we're really into that top list. I have first Levi above all of them, then Jan, then Mikasa and Armin at the same step and then Connie and Sasha at the same step. Eren, ah. you know, now he's not into that top list, but when he's gonna enter into it, he's gonna be above, you know, Connie and Sasha really quick, I think. But for now, you know, I, I don't know why he's not into it. Because I can cry for him, he can make me really emotional and I care about him and I'm supporting him a lot. But I love so much the other ones. Like Levi, do I really need to explain why? 
Jen same like since the beginning I really appreciate Jen and I'm seeing it each time Armin it's really more because of that particular episode and what happened also oh I was wearing the same pure I think during that particular episode when he he said something you know really personal about himself about the fact that he never thought you know that he could be useful to his friends and stuff like that and he really spoke to my heart during that moment and since that moment uh, I'm really yes uh, Armin is right there Mikasa I love her so much she's such a badass she's such a good fighter and also how she is, you know, her attitude and how she is with Eren and all of that. I love her so much for that. And Connie and Sasha, Sasha, it's really like when we discovered her past, her background, it was great. But also she's such a funny character and such a sweet one, a genuine one. Like she's honest about everything, Sasha. Like she's really like we can read her as an open book and I love so much that about her and she was so brave when she saved that kid I love her for that and Kanye the same during a lot of action moments I loved him and to discover that about his family it made me so sad for him I love this too also a lot so yes six favorite characters and I'm glad because really for me for three of them I'm pretty sure that there are not parts of this organization like no I'm at 100% sure of it for Levi, Jan and Sasha because we saw their backgrounds for Armin and for also Kanye I'm pretty sure that they are not also a part of it because Kanye what happened to his family and Armin the fact that he's a narrator of all of this story and the fact that you know all of what we know about him, about that book that his grandpa had, about things like that. Like for me, it can't be a part of it. But Mikasa, Mikasa, I think that she can be a clever titan like Eren. Without being a part of this organization, she can be one. And maybe at first she was supposed to be like an Ackerman. That guy, his last name is Ackerman. It can't be Mikasa's dad. Because we saw him dying. Or maybe it was our real dad and that guy was not our real dad. She was raised by adoptive parents. Oh, 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 oh. wait a minute. Dr. Yeager was visiting them. That's why I think also that maybe there were parts of this organization and that's why I think that maybe they were training Mikasa to be like Annie. But can it be possible that Mikasa was trained to be like Annie by this guy, this Ackerman who is a real dad and then she was taken away and adopted by this new parent that Dr. Yeager was visiting because he is a part of this organization but he also betrayed them by doing that to Eren in secret. Ah, can it be possible? Or maybe it's just an anchor, it's just someone related to your family, Mikasa. And that someone is also related to Levi's past background. Okay, I'm gonna stop this video right now, and that was all for today for you and for me. These two episodes that's already great. The last time that I'm gonna see you for a new session of binge watching of Attack on Titan, I would have edited these four first episodes of the season three, so I would have time to think about it, to work on my series, and maybe I would have new ones on the intro of the next episode. So watch the intro of the next episode. Right now, already on Patreon, because if you are watching this on YouTube, on Patreon, we have five episodes of Advent, so they already add my series, my new series. And if not, on a new video for you on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so it's all for you and for me for today. So it's all for me for now. So bye for now. Bye. Wait a minute. Why am I dark? Ah.
Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Great.